you're looking for a slick city pad. Or a cosy cottage in the country. A first home just for you. Or a forever home for the whole family. Everything you need to know is right here. We're back and eager as ever to put the heart into the great British home hunt. Fabulous. Fabulous. Cool. Well, I haven't had one of those in a while. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. I yeah, want absolutely. it. <laughs> but with high expectations, this does not work for me. I just don't feel that I'm in love with it. You hate me today, don't you, Scott? Yeah. Yeah, OK. And the market is tricky as ever. What is going on at the moment? The fight to find a home to fit your heart in just got tougher. Do you know when you can't see yourself in somewhere? What's wrong with young people today? Well, I start feeling a bit claustrophobic in here. Over the coming weeks, we're springing into action. <laughs> you can do whatever you like if you were sewing costume like that. <laughs> and working our socks off. I'm going to kick off my shoes on this grass. To find the perfect match... <laughs> oh, oh, yes. ...of hearts and homes. <laughs> I can't even speak. <laughs> This week, we're bouncing from one extreme to another. That is brilliant. I actually feel quite sick. <laughs> Up one minute. <laughs> I'm just a little bit lost for words. It's so, it is amazing. Down the next. Teeny. Doesn't look like it's got size or character. If we don't catch them on the rebound... <laughs> you can have an awesome party in this house. Yeah. We could hit rock bottom. <laughs> oh! <laughs> it's quite the carry-on. Where yes, did you last yes. see my chest? I won't answer that. This week we're in Hertfordshire with two fast-paced young couples determined to home in on a more grown-up future. They've got big dreams on modest budget, so we've been called in to help. Nice breakfast, Phil. Love your new house. <laughs> Thanks very much. I thought we'd start close to home. We'll be cutting a swathe across commuter belt territory, sleuthing the suburbs and surrounds of historic St Albans, as well as the bijou market town of Tring. I'll be going Tringside with 30-somethings Neil and Liz. They're currently squeezed into Liz's single girl flat in Watford. <laughs> Sorry. And have precious little time to find a future family home thanks to their high-powered accountancy jobs. Work is stressful and it's, it's quite busy. We don't have the time and we can't commit to finishing work at five o'clock to go and look at houses of an evening. We don't get to spend as much time together and when we plan things, sometimes they have to be postponed or we may have to work weekends. Recently engaged, they've been struggling to juggle planning a wedding and finding a house with long working days and busy social lives. Yes! But they deal with it the way they know best. It is ridiculous, but because we're so busy, we have spreadsheets that we use to track everything. The wedding, the honeymoon, even their friends and family time, visits to the bathroom. Everything has its own spreadsheet. It's a bit pathetic, but a necessary evil at the moment. Yeah, so we actually are typical accountants, even though we say we're not. They have an eye to the future and are looking for a home they could start a family in. Tring is only a 30-minute commute to Watford. Plus, it's where Neil grew up and where his mum still lives. But their search hasn't just foundered for lack of time. We'd go and see houses and then I'd get very frustrated because Liz would be uber critical everywhere we went to see. And I, I would get a little bit disheartened. If we made a mistake, it's very expensive to get out of. Neil feels a bit beaten down by me and he needs some, he needs some backup. Hmm, I reckon I know the perfect woman for the job. The decision to come to Tring is whose? I'm from Tring, mm -hmm. but it wasn't actually my decision to move back to Tring. I'd say it was more my decision because I'm a little bit older than Neil and I think about the future. And I'd love to have children and I do know how important it is to be near family. And my parents are a bit too far away, but Neil's mum lives in Tring. And do you think your mum would, would want to be involved if, if you did have children? I'd like to think so, yeah. Yes, no, we'll <laughs> never take it for granted. So on paper, your search is simple. I know why you need help. You work in Watford, you're both working very hard, how can you possibly search for a house in Tring? But I'm not quite so sure that it's going to be that easy. And that's despite the fact that Neil and Liz have a good budget. For their £400,000, they want off-street parking and a garden, at least three bedrooms and ideally separate living and dining spaces. Alas for them, and now for me, we're in prime Commuterville. So competition for family houses in this area is high. 
and that wouldn't necessarily show up on their spreadsheets. I'm confident you'll manage to excel, Kirsty. While Kirsty's off in search of a tringing success in the northwest corner of Hertfordshire, I'm 20 miles east in St Albans, another very popular commuter spot. Ever since they got married two years ago, IT consultant David and fashion merchandiser Claire have become increasingly desperate to get off the rental merry-go-round. In the last five years that we've been living together, we've lived in five houses, so we're at the end of our tether with moving. With only enough savings to be able to afford a flat rather than a longed-for house and garden, they were feeling disheartened when Dave's dad very generously chipped in. Well, we've managed to get together £60,000 for a deposit. Which we're really, really happy it's, about. We didn't think we'd ever afford to buy a house. Now they're eager to find somewhere to put down roots and grow into. However, their current rental accommodation right in the heart of St Albans has set the bar very high. I just absolutely love all the characters, so if there's any chance of anything like that yeah. in a property, I know I would absolutely love it. I would personally just prefer a big house. A big house within a 10-minute radius of St Albans Station, no less, to ensure Dave's work commute to London Bridge is doable. We've set ourselves a challenge living in the south-east, um, but this is where we like it. So. Yeah. You're telling me it's a challenge. The cash injection from the bank of Dave's dad may have brought their search to life, but their criteria could create a monster. You're not scared of monsters, are you, Phil? My spies tell me that you currently rent what's a very nice place. We've been pretty spoiled in our current house, which has probably been one of the reasons we've been so reluctant to take a step down into a flat or something which we could only afford up mm. until recently. Mm. Your budget is... 240 is our absolute maximum budget. Uh, we... Ideally, we want to spend 230. Uh, right. Well, I'm told that the one that you live in is worth 320 to 350. Really? Yeah. Oh. Gosh. <laughs> that doesn't surprise me. Um, you can't move the budget. Yeah. So other things within your ideal criteria mm -hmm. has to shift. We've decided that we'd be prepared to move a bit further out so okay. that we could try and get a similar property. Okay. Yeah. They're talking the talk. Question is, will they walk the walk? With first-time buyers, we're mm. a bit clueless when it comes to what we want to do. Um, negotiating, um, mm. you're much more aware of the, the amount that we could potentially get off. <laughs> <laughs> I can do deals if you can make decisions. But come on, let's make a start. They're putting a lot of faith in you, Phil. I'll certainly be hoping for divine inspiration. Claire and Dave have a maximum of £240,000 to spend. They want a two- to three-bed house with two reception rooms, garden and off-street parking. And they'd most emphatically like to be within a ten-minute drive of the train station in St Albans. They've set their top budget to stay within the 25% deposit and 75% borrowing ratio. This way their repayments could work out less than their current monthly rent of just under £1,000. Both our couples want to be in areas enticing to many a capital commuter. Trings, 40 minutes by train to London, and St Albans, only 20. And clearly every minute counts, with the average house price in St Albans nearly £90,000 more than in Tring, over four grand a minute. Hats off to you for taking on St Albans, Phil. I'll be getting a halo if I pull off a purchase for Dave and Claire. What's their budget? 240 for St Albans? Yeah. What are they looking for, a studio flat? <laughs> well, three bedrooms. They might have to settle with two. The difficulty, I think, is that she wants something that's characterful and sweet and he wants something that's big and spacious. So that in order to combine both, they're going to have to go quite a long way out of St Albans, but I don't think they know that yet. Who's going to tell them? Muggins. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the man in the blue suit. <laughs> How about you? I'm kind of like, this is what, how your life is going to go, so these are the things you have to take into account. And he's kind of looking at me wide-eyed. Like... You do like to point to people, this is how your life is no, about I'm not. to... No, I know. I'm just saying, <laughs> you know, you can't... I, that thing that I'm allergic to is the idea of finding somebody house which they're going to have to sell in two years' time. Yeah. It's like buying yeah. clothes for children which will only fit them today and won't fit them tomorrow. Yeah. Which I have been known to do so that they look really <laughs> I perfect. I wasn't going to say that. <laughs> Anyway, we need a house that won't just fit today, but will fit tomorrow. I'm with you on that, Kirstels. So heads down, because it could be slim pickings for me in Tring. Sitting at a low point in the Chiltern Hills, known as the Tring Gap, 
This Hertfordshire market town is close to the capital and what some would say is the finest countryside in the UK. Add in 17th century charm and it's not hard to understand why Tring has an attractive ring to many. It's a great place for families, um, lots going on. There's loads of opportunities to do all sorts of stuff. If you walk down this high street, you'll see people saying hello to one another, which is unbelievable, really. <laughs> but good neighbours don't come cheap. The average cost of a house here is £290,000, 78% above the current national average. And although Liz and Neil have worked and saved hard to achieve a budget of 400 grand, it doesn't make this search any easier. There's a gap in the property stock currently available in their price bracket. My first property is on the lower side of that gap. It's literally a couple of minutes jaunt from the high street, and on paper it's ideal. At nearly 70 grand under budget, it would certainly keep financial pressure to a minimum. But will they see that as a bonus? This house is on the market at £335,000 and it is the perfect, let's not stretch ourselves, good location, good garden, three-bedroomed, start a home. I don't mind it's £335,000 because it means we can still go on holidays. <laughs> yes. Big tick for staying open-minded. The price does mean there's a lot of leeway for improvement, although perfectly adequate, the kitchen and dining area could benefit from more space. Time pressures mean these two have dismissed lots of properties via online viewing alone, including this one. But in doing so, they've overlooked its potential. So, this is what we felt you had to make bigger. So that's the current kitchen. So basically, you just have to push it out. This was one when we looked on the internet and the pictures. Liz hadn't thought there'd be enough storage in the kitchen. And actually, when you look at it, and you talk about how you'd have to extend it to get the big family kitchen, it does sort of make more sense. I hope this is a case of genuine interest, rather than first viewing politeness. Upstairs are the required three bedrooms, ample storage, and even the bonus of a master ensuite. Teeny. Is it? Well, it, is it's it practical. Sweet? Granted, the proportions are not grand, but the house has a very livable feel. What they feel about this house, I can't read it yet. Hands up, I couldn't predict. Right now, what is in my tea leaves is not entirely visible. No future for you then as clairvoyant Kirsty. The fate of the house may rest on the third bedroom, which at best could be described as bijou. I'm a little disappointed at the size of this room. Yeah, I think so. It's just... I do think it feels like a home though. Yeah, it does. But could it be their home? That's the big question. So, you looked slightly if you were going to cry when you went up the stairs, Liz. Were you horrified? No, not horrified. When we say one of our must-haves is three beds, I think we should have said three good-sized bedrooms. Right. That says it all, Kirsty. Moving on. Hope you've got a good-sized plan B. I'm in St Albans with David and Claire, who are keen to settle down and quit the merry-go-round of renting. And I'm doing a tricky balancing act in Tring with Neil and Liz, two accountants who don't want to miscalculate. My first property right in the heart of Tring did not make them go ring-a-ding. I think we should have said three good-sized bedrooms. Right. So my next number needs to be of a grander scale. And I'm searching with Dave and Claire, who have been seduced by the charms of St Albans. Family help has finally given them the deposit to buy their first marital home here. But a recent survey named St Albans the UK's third most expensive city to buy in. So there's a premium on those charms. Yet plenty of people are feeling the love. It's so close to London, but yet it's very green and there's lots to do. If you're living in the city centre, then you can kind of just walk to shops, bars, restaurants and the train station. I can't imagine living anywhere else, really. Testament to its popularity is the fact that the average house price here is £376,000, a whopping 130% higher than the national average. And unfortunately for us, 140 more than Dave and Claire have to spend. This could be one tricky search, but I've conjured up a property in the northeast of St Albans that meets a key priority. 
being 10 minutes' drive from the station for Dave's commute to London. I thought it was, it was quite sweet. It comes with an allocated parking spot. Yeah, yeah. And we're tucked down the end of a quiet cold as that. You can hear the birds in the trees yeah. and that sort of thing. What do you think? It's a nice area. It's very quiet. I'm not to totally familiar with Jersey Farm, so I'm a bit anxious about that. And the property doesn't look like it's got size or character, so <laughs> I'm a bit concerned at the moment. Open mind. Yep, open yep. mind. Come on. <laughs> Hmm, I don't think Claire's convinced by your first offering, Mr Spencer. Let's hope the inside of this 1980s terrace surprises her. It certainly has the downstairs space Dave's after. But being so close to St Albans means this house is 10 grand over their budget at £250,000. Come on in. And that's not the only home truth to come. This is a two-bedroom house. Yep. If you want to be close to St Albans, 2.7 yep. miles, yep. two bedrooms on a nice quiet spot with some parking and yep. some good living space. Okay. Um, that's what you get. That's what you get. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. No. I sense disappointment, but that may change when they see the kitchen. Ah, wow. this is nice. The big selling point of this house is the conservatory extension, which makes a great dining area overlooking the garden. Are we getting things right? When we were stood outside, I was I just thought, no. Mm. We came in and I thought, mm, mm, probably, no. But this room mm. kind of balances out. That feels like it's the compromise, maybe. This is more than adequate yeah. living space for us. Mm. It's a nice kitchen. Yeah. The only thing I'm concerned about is two bedrooms. Yeah. Help yourself. Have a wander upstairs. Right. Right. Go for your life. Give me a shout if you've got any questions. A three-bed house in the same street sold last year for over 340 grand. So two beds is going to be as good as it gets around here. But do these two bedrooms measure up? They want to be able to have a double bed in their spare room for family visitors. It would be well, putting up the bed when people came round. Yeah, which is exactly what we are at the moment. This would be a sensible option for them, but at the same time, it's something of a deliberate... Um, reality check on my part because their list of requirements it's not just hopeful it's entirely unrealistic if they want to be this close to central St Albans it's so quiet around here yeah feels like I've retired <laughs> <laughs> meanwhile Phil is entering his second childhood <laughs> <laughs> no spring chicken I did hit the ground. I don't think this is built for me. <laughs> Bottom of the league after that performance, I see no future for you as a tramp champ. Better not bounce my day job, then. So how did I do? First property? I think it's not a no. I'm still open to this one. But we are stretching ourselves at, well, yeah. 250 is above our yeah. amount that we want to spend. I think... Um, I if, think it if it was in reach at 230, 2.30, maybe. We might be interested. This is just, you know, yeah. the start yeah. of the process. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go on and see other things. I sense they're not quite grasping how much they may need to spend to be this close to St Albans, even for a two-bed property. It's up to the man in the blue suit to help them see clearly. 20 miles away in the town of Tring, although well under budget, Liz and Neil's first property didn't quite size up to their vision of a future family home. Our next property is just a 10-minute walk from the high street, and I have high hopes. Could this be the house? Yes, definitely. This is the kind of thing I envisioned. From out here, it almost looks like a family home already. Off to a good start there, Kirsty. Inside, this house has its quirks. An extension has added extra living space, but the kitchen hasn't been made open plan. An unconventional layout, but it works. With an asking price of £380,000, it's 20 grand under budget. The sun is finally coming out. And look, you've got a trampoline and a dip. Just as well Phil's not here. He'd only get all giddy. Don't worry, I'll leave any trampoline tricks to you from now on. This is quite nice, this bit here. It's quite a lot of house, £380,000. Yeah, I'm surprised it's that much. An offer at the asking price had been accepted but then fell through. They put it straight back on the market and uh, they uh, have someone saw it at the weekend is coming back for a second viewing tomorrow. We'd have to move pretty quick. Yeah, if you really wanted it. Well, that sounds positive, but they've not even seen the whole house yet. Upstairs, the extension also means one of the three bedrooms is long and narrow, but there's ample space to accommodate both visitors and children. And while Liz checks out the storage, I have something to show Neil behind the garage. Look at this. Wow. 
Isn't this cool? It's a lot bigger than I thought it would be. Yeah. Complete with office space, this is a proper grown-up house in Neil's hometown. Do you feel you're coming home having succeeded? You've gone away, got a good job, nice girl, and then you're coming home. I don't really see it like that. I think it, li <laughs> it was Liz who really put the idea of moving back to changing my mind. But, but this is the, the, the obvious this choice. This is the obvious choice. There are people for whom Tring is their dream place to live. All the signs suggest this could be a strong contender, with its proximity to town and mum and enough space for the family. I am going to have all this wrapped up before Phil Spencer even puts in an appearance. Ha <laughs> ha, Motley laugh. I'm feeling pretty confident about this, but pride comes before a fall, that's for sure. Swinging in Tring. Don't go too high now, Kirsty. It's only further to fall. So, what do you think? It's a good house. It's a good it's house. Nice. It's good size up here, isn't it? I think you just have to work out how the living space would work for us. That's definitely one in the running, then. And a chance to let my hair down. Watch and learn, Phil. Watch and learn. Kirsty's search is positively bouncing along in Tring. But I'm taking a leap of faith for my second property with Dave and Claire. We've slipped over the Hertfordshire border into Bedfordshire, into a village popular with first-time buyers. Slip End is 20 minutes from St Albans, but Luton Park train station is nearby, so living here would only add about 10 minutes to Dave's London commute. That said, I know the location will be a massive compromise, but this property is too good not to show. And I have backup from the champ on the tram. Always on hand to keep your end up, Phil. The reason for being here is you get so much more for your money. I'm really nervous. I said it was madness bringing us here, so <laughs> I really hope it is something special. I hope, actually, no, I hope it isn't, because I don't want to live in slip ends, so... Judging from the reaction, we might as well be in Land's End. I still have faith in you, Phil. This early 19th century end of terraced house has character aplenty for Claire and oodles of space for Dave. Both sleeping and living quarters are extremely generous. And it's under budget, with an asking price five grand less than their top spend. I don't know what to say. Um, yeah, it's, it's very nice so far, but we are in sli slip end. <laughs> <so>. <laughs> It might seem a wrench if they are addicted to the town buzz of St Albans, but our first viewing showed they need to compromise on something, and this is a whole lot of house. All the bells and whistles. Yeah. Not yeah. for nothing does Phil drag you to slip end. <laughs> <laughs> it's a proper oh. family house. Yeah, it feels quite grown up, doesn't it? I don't know whether we are grown up yet. <laughs> <laughs> With things as they are at the moment, the sensible thing is to try and find a house which you're not going to outgrow. It's worth remembering that the cost of moving is high. On average, over 5% of the sale price of the house. So the more long-term the home, the better. Oh, this is nice. It. That is amazing. The, the fireplace is really nice. It's, it's huge. <laughs> you look terrified. No, I feel terrified. Oh. I do feel for Claire. <laughs> Making future-proof decisions is daunting. And this house could be a seriously big psychological leap for a couple who've not yet hit 30. If they don't want to take life seriously, yeah. then they shouldn't be buying a house. Mm. They do want to take life seriously. They both yeah. take their work seriously. Yeah. They're grown-ups. No, I, I feel like you and I are being kind of old and wise and giving sensible advice, which we should give, but it's slightly making me feel they're just going to do their own thing anyway. No, I think, uh, I think the advice really sinks in. I think it makes a difference to people. I think it's important. Otherwise, you wouldn't still be doing this after 13 years. I think we've well and truly put the cat among the pigeons here, Phil. You can have an awesome party in this house. Yeah. <laughs> Maintain some of our youth in this huge house. <laughs> if it was in swinging St Albans, this house would set them back well over 300,000 but is a wow house enough to get them to compromise on area. It's a whole different ball game, isn't it? Mm, it certainly is. I actually feel quite sick. <laughs> it's, 
it's, it's, it's, it's a perfect more than house. we could ever expect it is. We've definitely thrown us a curveball with this house. Phil we is an ace cricketer. <laughs> I, I'm a swing bowler in cricket and this is my <laughs> curveball. I always tell people Kent under 21s, is that true? Yeah, that's true. Uh, but the nice. SAS, that's not true. <laughs> <laughs> nice to know you think I'm a special force, Kirsty. Did I say that? You certainly played agent provocateur with this house. Claire and Dave have a lot to mull over. Back in Hertfordshire, I have a similar present wants, future needs strategy for Neil and Liz. Property two appealed in terms of size and proximity to Trings High Street and Neil's mum. But today I'm taking them seven miles away to the village of Dagnall near Berkhamsted. Surrounded by beautiful rolling countryside, it's a fairly small village where their £400,000 budget could buy really big. So we have come a little way out of Tring. But the result is a fantasy house. First impressions? In my mum and dad's house. It's lovely, yeah. isn't it? Wow. Yeah. It is wow. And we aren't that far. I mean, you came from Tring this morning. You don't feel worried about being here? No, I just want to get in. OK, look. let's get in. Come on, come on. Good point, Neil. Can't say I blame him for being impatient. This house is a very seductive combination of style and space. With four bedrooms, one currently used as a study, two bathrooms and the bonus of a downstairs loo come utility room. It's on the market at £415,000, but I'm sure a deal could be done to bring it in on budget. In Tring, it would cost upwards of five hundred grand. Oh, <laughs> it's really nice, isn't it? The kitchen diner overlooks the garden, which runs across the entire width of the house. It's a great layout and quite stunning. And Liz and Neil look just that, stunned. Neil, does it upset you when a house is nice? No. <laughs> I'm just a little bit lost for words. It's so, it is amazing. As expected, I'm seeing smiley faces. But given that they're used to working and living in Watford with social action at their fingertips, raising a family in a village would be a major reality shift. You said, um, when I first met you, that Neil was a bit younger than you and you spent more time thinking towards the future and planning. Is he ready for a kind of dinner party social life rather than a pub social life? He better be, cos he does all the cooking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think he still, he still likes his nights out. I think he'd still want the option to go out either in London or in Watford after work, but it's just how we're going to logistically do that. Let's hope my pair of accountants are both operating from the same spreadsheet on this search. I'm staying out of the way. Those two have a lot of decisions to make and this house is about a very fundamental change in their life and a bit of growing up. And I know that Liz wants to do that and she sees that if she wants children, it's imperative that she does do that. But for Neil, you know, he's younger than Liz and this is a very grown-up house and it's not one you can easily return to after a night out at the pub. And I genuinely think that's one of the things that he's worrying about. It's a forever home. It ticks so many of the criteria, but not all of them. They're used to using their heads, but you know what they say, home is where the heart is. Thoughts? It's all beautiful. And whoever designed it did it really well after I've seen the other house yesterday as well. With the house itself, there's no sort of questions. The other one had that strange, long, almost yeah. double room, and that was a yeah. bit of a question mark. It's more a question over the area. We've got another house to see. Lot to think about. I didn't think you were going to make it this difficult. No, I'm not deliberately <laughs> trying to make it. <laughs> No, it's, no good. it's a good thing. Yeah, lot to think about. OK, yeah. okay. brilliant. Onwards and upwards. My guess is this house has confused their calculations. <laughs> this week I'm in Tring with soon-to-be-wed Neil and Liz. They've set their heart on finding a family home before they head down the aisle. And I'm with David and Claire, a young couple who have cobbled together the cash and are desperate to buy their first home. We've been working our socks off in Hertfordshire, pushing both sets of house hunters beyond their boundaries. Claire and David to Slip End over St Albans. We've definitely thrown us a curveball with this house. 
and Neil and Liz to Dagnall as opposed to Tring. It's more a question over the area. I have one more entry for my accountant spreadsheets before their final audit. And it's back in the swing of all things Tring, close to the amenities and to Neil's mum for potential childcare cover. We're on the edge of the town's conservation area, known as the Tring Triangle, and we've got Phil along to square things off. Who are you calling a square? A 1930s detached house with plenty of off-street parking. This could be the compromise between the layout of property three and the location of property two. First impressions? Being here back in Tring, it's much nicer. We're much closer to my mum, much closer to more shops, more sort of known amenities. It's more of a known quantity. My favourite pub. Is literally <laughs> round the corner. <laughs> Why don't you and pub? I just go for a pint yeah, and we'll, we'll let them work I it think out? How Neil gets to the pub might be at the core of this search. <laughs> <laughs> Priorities, Kirsty. Priorities. A deceased estate, the property is on the market at three hundred and ninety thousand pounds, ten grand under budget. The proportions and layout are good, but although the house is a little dated, it could still be improved to create the ideal family home close to future childcare. Location is important to Neil and Liz, but Neil may be wobbly on why it's important. So, you have to be completely honest with yourself, Neil, and I'm going to be really harsh at this point. Is being in Tring about the childcare or the pub? It's about the childcare. But <laughs> you, you struggled with that. You struggled. Do I trust you, Phil, to have a serious word with Neil? Leave it to me, Kirsty. Leave it to me. Are you dealing with things? Yeah, I think so. We've seen a, at least one house that we'd looked at or thought to look at before, one we didn't even know existed, mm. and one in a place we would never have considered. Okay. So all that combined is really helpful. Helpful or confusing? A bit of both. Yeah, I mean, you, for what it's worth, I, I think you need to go through the confusing period in order to make a confident decision at the end. Let's hope we're creating more confidence than confusion. So I just had to drag me away. A bit of man-to-man of -man time. You didn't say, oh, she goes on about baby, she's so <laughs> no, wrong, I didn't. Did no, I didn't, no, I didn't. I know it's hard to buy a house in anticipation of something, but yes, it's the only but sensible way. It, I completely agree, but it, it is difficult for them. It's just, every, Everybody tries to do it, but you're making a long-term decision, you're forecasting your life into a, an area that you know nothing about, and that's, yeah. that's difficult. Yeah. If anyone's capable of the ultimate forecast, it should be our spreadsheet-loving accountants. And you've got more space up there. It could be your cupboard. Just the one. Outside, the appearance of the sun seems to be sending someone dotty. This is my first no-coat day. Please, no, no coat, no coat, no coat, just the dress, the sun is out. No scarf, look. When yes, did you last yes. see my chest? I won't answer that. Kirsty might be clucking over the weather, but are Liz and Neil weighed down by the burden of decisions? Ooh, are we well, confused you're, you're looking of a little troubled, yes. Yeah, confused of Watford at the moment. <laughs> Um, yeah, I just said I want Kirsty to make the decision for me. <laughs> <laughs> That's the truth. <laughs> I think the thinking is really between two and four, and then you have to look at that as an option against number three. Go back to the drawing board tonight about what you set out to achieve, what was important at the beginning, and try and sleep on it. It's, it's never easy. No, it's not easy. The big ones never are. Across the county, Claire and Dave have an equally big decision to make. They loved Property 2 in Slip End, but they were worried it was too far from the life they've carved out in St Albans. Today, we're much closer to their stomping ground in London Colney, a satellite village southeast of St Albans. It's ten minutes' drive to the train station, which is a main priority, and they know the area. How about the road and the, the general setting? Quite busy, but it's not, not the worst. It's not, not the, the worst, most yeah. attractive road in the world, but it's not bad either, so... Okay. Mm. Let's see if the house passes muster, then. OK. <laughs> You're at the tail end of your search, Phil, and you can't seem to put a smile on Claire's face. At least Dave's keeping an open mind, because this property is as close to their dream criteria as they'll get for their money. Tenanted until very recently, it's been spruced up for sale, and the asking price is bang on budget at just under two hundred and forty thousand. It's a blank canvas, this is. Yeah, I like blank. the fact it's a blank canvas. Yeah. And they've Probably. done a nice job of it as well. My goodness, Claire's talking positive. You might have finally cracked it with this one, Phil. 
So, um, Phil, I haven't asked the most important question yet. Yes. Oh, they're free bedrooms. <laughs> <laughs> well, what do you know, Dave? Oh, there are. Oh, watch out. We've got a very chipper pip on our hands. But, yes, this house does deliver. Plenty of room for visitors and there's even a fireplace. You could definitely make a centrepiece out of the fireplace. Mm. You're moving in. <laughs> this is good. Yeah. Well, we're not in slip end. <laughs> <laughs> Yesterday in slip end, it was really hard being in the house because we absolutely loved it and it was quite tough. But when we got back to St Albans, it felt nice. It felt nice yeah. So that made up our mind. It was quite easy after coming back to say it yeah. was too far. It seems they're so relieved to be back, they've almost forgotten their must-haves for a house. We haven't talked about the parking. You haven't even asked. No, You've seen three bedrooms no. and the parking's disappeared. We would be nervous about our car on this road, so we are hoping okay. for some parking. Is there off-road parking? <laughs> yes, there is. <laughs> there is. <laughs> yeah, okay. there is. There's parking okay. at the back, end that of the garden. very promising. Yeah, that's, that's really good. Mm. Ha that. Have a look, have a look. Thank you. Happy house hunters. Always nice to have. I left it to the last minute, but I might have pulled it out of the bag. Ah, uh, slow things down, Phil. You don't want to get too overconfident. But if this doesn't impress, I don't know what will. At the back of the garden, there's a substantial parking space. It's I'd, huge. I'd call that a double drive easily. It's all sounding extremely positive, Kirsty. Have the garden and parking finally nudged them into the yes zone? So yesterday, end of the day, a little confused. Yeah, very confused. Today, this morning, back in home ground, and, yeah. and you seem very happy with this. It feels, yeah. it feels much better to be here, doesn't it? For me, overall, for the whole house, it's pretty much spot on. I think the only thing for me would be the separate dining room and living room, and the kitchen isn't exactly what I like, but the fact that it doesn't need anything doing to you it, and do we it, could exactly. move in. It's not, like, it's not like it's not possible. There's the yeah. space to do mm -hmm. everything we need to do. Mm. Result, we've found the right house in the right place. Now all I need to do is get it for the right price. In Tring, has Neil and Liz's spreadsheet approach helped them decide on the right house? After viewing four, they were considering no less than three. Now... We're much firmly, much more firmly considering just one house. Really? Yes. Yes. <sighs> Impressed. Is it the spreadsheets that did it? <laughs> it's... Some good your, rational thought, yeah. And your sensible advice about actually having an honest conversation about childcare. Right, OK, OK. Well, I shall report back to Phil that your house decision is based on my sensible advice. <laughs> so, go on, tell me which one. Crosschurch Road. House number two? Yes, right. house number two. OK. I told you that trampoline would swing at Phil. Trampoline, you say? This property's a mere ten minutes walk from Neil's favourite pub. It's also a 10-minute walk from his mum, Marion's house. So Liz and Neil have asked her along for her opinion. Best impressions? It's good. I can imagine you living in this room, really, yes. because you've got yeah. the sunshine and the big yeah. the patio doors. It's not a renovation project. No. It's you've definitely livable in its current guise. Yeah. Yep. You've done wallpaper stripping before, haven't you? Well, that's not renovation, though, is it? No, but... So have you done so wallpaper so stripping before? Has he not I told have. you? No. No, I did it for my grandparents when they moved in, in Tring. Right. The whole house top to bottom. Yeah, this is it? why it's useful to have people's mums come on <laughs> house hunt. This, you've not said anything about your I was, DIY I was skills. I keeping it under wraps, to be honest. You were keeping it under yeah. wraps, yes. Then everyone's pleasantly surprised rather than massively disappointed. <laughs> Undersell, over deliver. That's my motto, too. Neil and Marion seem positive, but is Liz still dreaming of Dagnall and the forever home, which was a touch too far from Tring? We loved that house. Mm. We really did. It was lovely. But, um, this fits the bill better. That could be the next step in yeah. Tring. And we've just said, you know, lovely, but the childcare yeah. thing is quite important. Yeah. So this one, they didn't use it as the master bedroom. It's a decent size, isn't it? Maybe not the yellow, but... <laughs> not my colour, but it's, it is a good size. Yeah. Well, by now, I think I know the answer. But just to be on the safe side, would you like to be the proud owner of that house? That's the question, isn't it? Yes, and actually I think I'd be disappointed if I'm not. Could you see yourself coming here to look after your grandchild? Yes, I think I could. That's a relief. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> a relief indeed. Nonetheless, it's by no means in the bag. Before we have any further discussions, 
there is another interested party. Best crack on then, Kirsty. Not a moment to waste. We're in Hertfordshire with Dave and Claire, who are keen on a 1930s terrace close to the buzz of St Albans. And Liz and Neil, who have set their hearts on a three-bedroom semi-detached house in Tring. But we need to act decisively now, as there is another interested party. You are in a dream position, your dream buyers. Your position is worth money. It is worth something. I agree, it's definitely worth something. I don't want to jeopardise no. the house, though. Daniel, it's Kirsty. This house had been under offer at the asking price of £380,000. Can I sell the vendor on the benefits of a chain-free buyer? The question I have for you is, what is that worth? Because I think it's worth quite a lot. What if we said that I wouldn't pay a penny more than 375, but we would settle at 375? If you could give it a really good shove at that, I'd be really pleased. Fantastic. OK, bye. <laughs> Neil's legs were shaking. I'm like, trust Kirsty. <laughs> I just hope that we've played it right. And over in St Albans, I have to shake my tail feathers on Dave and Claire's behalf. They've reached a decision and are keen on property three in London Colney. I think it's been the only house in our entire property search that we've both been excited about. It's it ticks house. literally every box we had. Uh, well, it's on the market just under 240. Uh, I know they've had an offer. Right. Which I understand was at 225, which okay. they rejected. OK. So we're going to have to do better than that. I think 230 would like. I think our maximum would be 235. So do I have your permission to offer 230? Yep, definitely. We've done the decisions. So, you do made the, the deals. deals. <laughs> 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 I wish I'd never said that now. <laughs> Let me see if I can now do a deal. Um, Sarah, is that you? It's Phil Spencer. Hi there. Um, they do want to make you an offer and they are keen to do a deal and complete a deal as soon as humanly possible. So I've got 230 for you, but that shouldn't really be seen as an opening offer, simply because I have already done some of your job and, uh, and pushed them up to the 230. Beyond that, we really are squeezing things. Thank you so much. Cheers. Bye-bye. It's less than they're looking for. OK. Um, but, I, you know, I think we played a reasonable hand there. Mm -hmm. Just wait and yeah. see what happens, I suppose. In Tring, we're still waiting, but I've had a text from the agent. So he sent me this text. Vendors are having a quick talk together and will call me in 15 minutes. We'll let you know ASAP. I just don't like having a situation where I can't influence it. No. It's, it's, out, it's completely out of our hands. It might only be the peacock calling in Tring, but in St Albans, it's the agent. Quick work, Sarah. Is this a good sign or a bad sign? Mm hmm Of course that's OK. Thank you, Sarah. Appreciate it. Cheers. Bye-bye. But it's not a no. He wants overnight to think about it. So, if it was a no, you know, okay. we'd hear about it. Okay. So... OK. Gosh, it's going to be a long night now, isn't it? <laughs> it is. The waiting game goes on for Dave and Claire. And for Liz and Neil? Positive thoughts, positive thoughts, positive thoughts, OK? Daniel. Uh, I'm very pleased at 375. Yeah, brilliant. OK, thank you. Bye. Thank you very much, Kirsty. We really appreciate everything you've done. <laughs> I do. It's such a relief. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. My pleasure. A great result for Liz and Neil. I love it when it all comes together. And the next day, I have news for Dave and Claire. Hello, Phil. Hello, Claire. How are you today? I'm very, very nervous. Well, you're about to get a lot better. I've got the offer agreed. Wow! Oh, yeah! <laughs> At 2.30? At 2.30, it's all yours. Yay! Thank you so much. Thank you. I feel 
completely over the moon, absolutely ecstatic. I can't wait to tell Dave. Many congratulations. I, I think it'll be a wonderful first home for you both. Thank you. Bye, Claire. That, of course, is one of the best bits of my job, is when I get to do a deal and make someone very happy. After six weeks, Liz and Neil are nearing exchange of contracts and looking forward to the day they'll be moving to Tring for good. I can't wait. It's, it's a new chapter and it's really exciting to move on. I'm excited about maybe having a first Christmas in our own home as well. Yeah, that would be amazing. And in St Albans, Dave and Claire are also eagerly anticipating the future and giving up renting for good. We're really excited about the fact that we have been able to um, move into a free bed house, which I think we, neither of us were expecting. When they move, they'll actually be saving money as their mortgage payments are going to be less than their rent. So there's some spare cash to spend on decorating. Very excited about putting our stamp on the property. Yeah. So you have a nice flat place here. I'm looking forward to moving in. Yeah. It's a feather in your halo, Phil. You may have put the saint into St Albans. Why, thank you, Angel.